Shatner is here. We're so excited to have him as always. And here's the thing, and maybe there's a relationship to Captain Kirk and maybe there isn't, but you've always been very forward-looking. William Shatner, famous for his portrayal of Captain James Kirk in Star Trek, has had a remarkable career in the American film industry. Captain on the bridge. As you were. Lieutenant. Valeris, sir. At 92 years old, he's achieved quite a lot, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of audiences worldwide. However, despite his success, Shatner has faced his share of personal struggles and health challenges. But you might wonder, how is he doing now? Join us as we delve into the life and tragic ending of William Shatner. The beginning of William Shatner's acting journey. William Shatner was born on March 22, 1931 in Montreal, Canada. He grew up in a Jewish family with his parents, Anne and Joseph Shatner, who ran a clothing business. Shatner has two sisters, Joy and Farla, and he attended schools in his neighborhood, Notre Dame de Grace, including Willingdon Elementary School and West Hill High School. Later, he studied economics at McGill University, where he graduated with a Bachelor of Commerce degree. Shatner's journey into the world of movies began while he was still in college. Back in 1951, he landed a small role in a Canadian comedy drama titled The Butler's Night Off. Credited as Bill Shatner, he portrayed a character simply described as a crook. After graduating, he delved into the world of theater, working as an assistant manager and actor at both the Mountain Playhouse in Montreal and the Canadian National Repertory Theater in Ottawa. His passion for acting led him to join the prestigious Stratford Shakespeare Festival in Ontario. At the festival, he took on various roles, including a part in Marlowe's Tamburlaine, which marked his Broadway debut in 1956. His career gained momentum when he appeared in the opening scene of a high-profile production of Sophocles' Oedipus Rex by Tyrone Guthrie, introducing him to television viewers across Canada. In another notable performance, Shatner played the minor role of the Duke of Gloucester while understudying Christopher Plummer as the king in Henry V. When Plummer had to withdraw from a performance due to a kidney stone, Shatner took the opportunity to present a distinctive interpretation of his role, impressing Plummer with his initiative and potential. Interestingly, Plummer later appeared as a Klingon adversary of Captain Kirk's in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Shatner's breakout role came in the MGM film The Brothers Karamazov in 1958. He also appeared in TV productions like The Christmas Tree, alongside notable actors like Ralph Bellamy and Jessica Tandy. In 1959, he starred in an episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents, and his performance garnered praise. Shatner's versatility was evident when he simultaneously acted on Broadway in The World of Susie Wong, while also working on a potential TV series. Tyrone Guthrie recognized this talent, considering him one of the most promising actors at the time. For a while, Shatner was seen as a potential peer of renowned actors like Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, and Robert Redford. However, despite early promise, his career trajectory didn't match that of his starrier contemporaries. According to Pat Jordan, author of an in-depth profile of Shatner for the New York Times, his failure to achieve acclaim akin to his peers was partly due to his professional philosophy of work equals work. This philosophy led him to participate in numerous projects that were considered forgettable, possibly harming his career in the long run. Yet, Shatner's talent shone through in various projects. He received acclaim for his roles in Roger Corman's The Intruder and Stanley Kramer's Judgment at Nuremberg. His versatility was evident in his appearances on popular TV shows like The Twilight Zone, Channing, and Route 66. In 1964, Shatner's career took a sci-fi turn with appearances in The Outer Limits and The Man from UNCLE. The following year, he guest-starred in Twelve O'Clock High and co-starred in the short-lived drama series For the People. Despite the series' brief run, Shatner's performance alongside Jessica Walter garnered critical acclaim. Before his iconic casting as James Kirk, Shatner was perceived by many, including Pat Jordan, as simply an actor who showed up on time, knew his lines, worked cheaply, and always answered his phone. How William Shatner landed the role that made him a star. In 1966, Shatner starred in the gothic horror film Incubus, notable for being the second feature-length movie entirely spoken in Esperanto. That same year, he made appearances on popular TV shows like Gunsmoke and The Big Valley, showcasing his versatility as an actor. In 1967, he took on the lesser-known film White Comanche, 
where he portrayed twin brothers, one virtuous, the other a ruthless warlord. But perhaps his most iconic role came in 1966 when he was cast as Captain James T. Kirk in Star Trek. Originally intended for a second pilot, Shatner impressed the producers and his portrayal of Kirk became synonymous with the character throughout the series' run from 1966 to 1969. Despite its eventual status as a cultural phenomenon, the original Star Trek series struggled to find its audience during its initial run on NBC. After airing for three seasons and producing 79 episodes, the show was canceled due to modest ratings. However, one episode, Plato's Stepchildren, aired on November 22, 1968, left a lasting mark on American race relations. The kiss between Captain Kirk and Lieutenant Uhura, acted by Nichelle Nichols, is often cited as the first instance of a white man kissing a black woman on scripted television in the United States. This scene is particularly remembered for breaking barriers. In 1973, Shatner reprised his role as Kirk, though only in voice, for the animated Star Trek series, which ran for two seasons and 22 episodes. However, after the cancellation of the original series in 1969, he faced a challenging period in his career. He struggled to find acting opportunities beyond the role of James T. Kirk, which led to financial difficulties. During this challenging time, Shatner lost his home and was left with very little money. To support his family, he took on any odd job he could find, including small party appearances. At one point, he even resorted to living in a truck bed camper in the San Fernando Valley. In the next phase of his career, Shatner's film roles leaned towards B-movies, including notable appearances in Roger Corman's Big Bad Mama in 1974, the horror flick The Devil's Reign in 1975, and the creepy Kingdom of the Spiders in 1977. On the small screen, he showcased his acting chops in various roles. One standout performance was as a prosecutor in a 1971 PBS adaptation of Saul Levitt's play, The Andersonville Trial. In addition to his film work, Shatner made a mark on television with his starring role in the Western-themed secret agent series Barbary Coast that ran from 1975 to 1976. He was also a sought-after guest star in popular shows of the era, appearing in episodes of Columbo, Ironside, Kung Fu, Mission Impossible, The Rookies, and The Six Million Dollar Man. One unique skill Shatner brought to casting directors was his expertise in martial arts. Trained in American Kenpo Karate by black belt Tom Bleeker, who himself had learned from the founder of American Kenpo, Ed Parker, Shatner's martial arts skills added depth to his action-oriented roles. To supplement his income from acting gigs, Shatner ventured into the realm of television game shows. You little shit! This one works, and it's streaming live to my friends. He became a familiar face on shows like Beat the Clock, Celebrity Bowling, The Hollywood Squares, Match Game, Tattletales, and Mike Stokey's Stump the Stars. His involvement in the $10,000 Pyramid series, where celebrities teamed up with contestants to guess words or phrases, showcased his competitive spirit. During his post-Kirk phase, advertising agencies also played a significant role in keeping Shatner busy. He appeared in numerous television commercials, promoting various brands and products. One notable campaign was for General Motors' Oldsmobile brand, where Shatner lent his charisma to endorse their vehicles. In addition to automotive ads, Shatner also endorsed food products like Promise Margarine, bringing his recognizable voice and presence to reassure consumers about the quality of the product. Canadian viewers might remember seeing Shatner in commercials for Super Value, a supermarket chain based in British Columbia, and its Ontarian counterpart, Loblaws. In these ads, Shatner, once the heroic Captain Kirk, assured viewers that they could trust the quality and value offered by these grocery stores. The Revival of Star Trek After Star Trek was cancelled, it didn't fade into obscurity. Instead, it gained a devoted following among fans who watched reruns of the show, and Captain Kirk emerged as a cultural icon. These passionate fans, often referred to as Trekkies, began organizing conventions where they could come together to celebrate their love for the series. Captain on the bridge. As you were. Lieutenant. Valeris, sir. These events featured opportunities to meet fellow enthusiasts, purchase Star Trek merchandise, and engage in question-and-answer sessions with members of the show's cast, including Shatner himself. 
Recognizing the enduring popularity of Star Trek, Paramount decided to capitalize on it by planning a sequel show called Star Trek Phase Two. However, the tremendous success of Star Wars in 1977 prompted the studio to shift gears and produce the next Star Trek adventure as a feature film rather than a television series. Thus, in 1979, Shatner and the original cast reunited for Star Trek The Motion Picture. This marked the beginning of Shatner's journey through the Star Trek film franchise, where he reprised his role as Captain Kirk in six more films. Despite the immense success of the Star Trek films, Shatner's relationship with his devoted fan base has had its ups and downs. In a memorable sketch on Saturday Night Live in 1986, he famously advised Trekkies to get a life, reflecting some of his frustrations with their obsessive adoration. However, his interactions with fans weren't always negative. Shatner has attended numerous conventions and events over the years, engaging with fans and embracing his iconic role in the Star Trek universe. In addition to his work in Star Trek, Shatner continued to diversify his career. He starred in the television series T.J. Hooker, which ran for five seasons and showcased his talents as a leading character. He also ventured into directing, taking charge of episodes of T.J. Hooker and even directing a Star Trek film, Star Trek V The Final Frontier. William Shatner, from T.J. Hooker to Tech War and Beyond. Working on T.J. Hooker sparked an idea in Shatner's mind an idea for a television show where he could blend elements of his roles as Hooker and Kirk. He envisioned a hard-boiled former police officer turned private investigator navigating a dystopian future. When a Writers Guild strike delayed the production of Star Trek V, Shatner seized the opportunity to turn his concept into a novel with the help of science fiction author Ron Goulart. Although Goulart downplays his role, Shatner acknowledges his significant contribution, particularly in rewriting. Their collaboration resulted in Tech War, published in 1989, which kicked off a successful series of novels that sold hundreds of thousands of copies. The popularity of the Tech War novels led to the production of four television movies, where Shatner portrayed the character Walter Bascom, the boss of the lead character. This success further spawned a television series, in which Shatner not only starred in but also directed several episodes. Although it had a brief run on networks like the USA Network and Sci-Fi, the Tech War franchise left a mark. In December 1989, Shatner was surprised on the set of the Starship Enterprise by Michael Aspell for an episode of the British television series, This Is Your Life. This unconventional ambush led to a lively recounting of his life through anecdotes shared by his acquaintances. He continued to diversify his acting roles, including a memorable appearance as a murderer in an episode of Columbo and narration for documentaries like Trinity and Beyond, The Atomic Bomb Movie. Shatner's creativity extended beyond literature and television. He lent his voice to the first-person shooter game William Shatner's Tech War in 1995 and served as a narrator for the American documentary film Trinity and Beyond, the atomic bomb movie. He also starred in the TV miniseries A Twist in the Tale shot in New Zealand. In the late 1990s, he made memorable appearances in popular TV shows like Third Rock from the Sun, where he portrayed the eccentric Big Giant Head, earning him an Emmy nomination. He also graced the big screen in movies like Miss Congeniality and Dodgeball, a true underdog story. However, it was his role as Denny Crane in the legal drama Boston Legal that brought Shatner critical acclaim, winning him a Golden Globe and several Emmy nominations. Notably, he became one of the few actors to win an Emmy for portraying the same character in two different series. Beyond acting, Shatner ventured into the digital world with his daily vlogs on Shatner Vision and later on YouTube with The Shatner Project. He also received stars on both the Hollywood Walk of Fame and Canada's Walk of Fame, recognizing his contributions to television and entertainment. Shatner's involvement in various projects continued into the 2010s. He starred in the CBS sitcom Shit My Dad Says, hosted the interview show Shatner's Raw Nerve, and appeared in episodes of Psych and Weird or What. Weird or What was a show that delved into the bizarre realms of UFOs and cryptozoology. It ran until August 2012, captivating fans of the arcane with its exploration of unconventional topics. Shatner also served as the chief executive officer of Core Digital Pictures, a special effects studio based in Toronto, Ontario, from 1994 to 2010. 
In 2011, Shatner released The Captains, a documentary where he interviewed other actors who portrayed starship captains in the Star Trek franchise. The following year, he debuted his one-man show on Broadway titled Shatner's World, We Just Live in It, which later toured across the United States. The Challenging Marriages of William Shatner Shatner had a rough time building a family, as he has been in four failed marriages. His journey into matrimony began with his marriage to Canadian actress Gloria Rand, formerly known as Gloria Rabinowitz, in 1956. Together, they built a family and welcomed three daughters into the world. However, the demands of Shatner's career, especially his iconic role in Star Trek, strained their union. Eventually, the couple parted ways in 1969, marking the end of their once promising relationship. His second marriage, to Marcy Lafferty, daughter of television producer Perry Lafferty, lasted from 1973 to 1990. Despite its longevity, the absence of children may have contributed to the complexities within the relationship, leading to its eventual dissolution. Shatner's third marriage to Noreen Kidd took a tragic turn in 1999. On August 9th, Shatner returned home to a devastating discovery. Noreen lying lifeless at the bottom of their swimming pool. Her sudden and tragic death, ruled as accidental drowning, left Shatner reeling with grief. He spoke openly about her battle with alcoholism, urging support for organizations aiding those overcoming addiction. In his autobiography, Shatner delves into the heart-wrenching details of his marriage to Noreen, revealing the role played by his friend Leonard Nimoy, who battled alcoholism himself. Nimoy's warnings went unheeded, and despite efforts at rehabilitation, Noreen succumbed to alcoholism. Shatner's attempts to cope with the profound loss took both personal and artistic turns. It was in 2000, amidst the grief of losing his wife, that Shatner revealed plans for a dark comedy titled The Shiva Club, aiming to explore the complexities of mourning through storytelling. In 2004, Shatner released the album Has Been, where he bared his soul through spoken word pieces like What Have You Done?, offering a poignant glimpse into his anguish upon discovering his wife's lifeless body. Through artistic expression, Shatner found a powerful outlet to navigate his pain and sorrow. Following the tragedy, Shatner found companionship once again in 2001 when he married Elizabeth Anderson Martin. Their union led to collaborative efforts, including Martin co-writing a song on Shatner's album. However, as time passed, strains emerged, leading to their divorce in 2020, marking another painful chapter in Shatner's personal life. Shatner's Professional Relationships Beyond his marriages, Shatner's professional relationship with Leonard Nimoy, which began in 1964, evolved into a deep bond. Initially, they were rivals because their characters, Kirk and Spock, were always competing for audience attention. However, over the course of the show's production, they became great friends. According to William, his friendship with the late Nimoy remains one of his favorite things to talk about. Shatner says he's made numerous great friends on various sets of films and TV series, but none have had the same longevity and impact that his friendship with Leonard did. However, despite their apparent closeness, they had a significant falling out during the final years of Nimoy's life. At first, Shatner was unsure why his longtime friend had blocked him out of his life, but he later realized that Leonard was upset over William filming him without his consent for a made-for-television documentary. In 2011, Shatner released a made-for-TV documentary called The Captains. But the uniforms belong to these two men revolving around all the different captains featured in the various Star Trek series. Leonard held a grudge because Shatner filmed him without his permission, which deeply offended him. Leonard seemed angry once he realized he was being filmed, but Shatner claims he initially thought his old friend was just joking. When he later realized Leonard had truly been offended, he was in shock. Although Shatner and Nimoy weren't on speaking terms towards the end of Nimoy's life, the passing of Leonard Nimoy in 2015 left Shatner grieving, mourning the loss of a beloved friend akin to a brother. Despite being unable to attend Nimoy's funeral due to prior commitments, Shatner's daughters represented him, while he paid tribute to Nimoy through an online memorial. Shatner fondly remembered Nimoy's humor, talent, and capacity for love, 
highlighting the profound impact Nimoy had on his life. Upon Leonard's passing, he also wrote a book dedicated to his late friend. Many found the release of the book to be opportunistic, especially considering that William and Leonard hadn't spoken in around five years. However, Shatner certainly had plenty of interesting experiences that were worth sharing regardless of how their friendship ended. Another source of solace for Shatner amid tumultuous times was his friendship with Heather Locklear, forged since their days co-starring on T.J. Hooker in 1982. Locklear's supportive presence became particularly evident after the tragic death of Shatner's wife, Nereen, in 1999. Their enduring friendship extended beyond the confines of their TV show, with Shatner playing a supportive role in Locklear's acting endeavors. Their collaboration continued on Boston Legal in 2005. Andy Green? I'm a client. I'm a partner. CEO, Krasberg Pelham. My name's on the door. Where Locklear portrayed Kelly Nolan, leading to playful banter and camaraderie between them. Their enduring friendship amidst the unpredictable world of show business provided a beacon of warmth amid the tragedies that marked Shatner's life. However, shadows loomed over the camaraderie among the Star Trek cast, with strained relationships casting a tragic undertone. Accusations of being difficult to work with were not uncommon, with co-stars like George Takei, Walter Koenig, and James Doohan openly expressing grievances. Shatner acknowledged the resentment held by some of his co-stars, recognizing the challenges they faced while working together. Takei's memoir and subsequent interviews shed light on the enduring tension, with Takei describing Shatner as difficult to work with. However, perspectives evolved over time, with Koenig and Duhan's relationships with Shatner improving in their later years. Duhan's journey towards reconciliation culminated in a heartfelt embrace and apology at a convention in 2003, symbolizing the burying of old grievances. William Shatner's impact on the entertainment industry till date. 2012 saw Shatner returning to his theatrical roots with Shatner's world, we just live in it. It's my world. a one-man show that graced Broadway before embarking on a nationwide tour. Additionally, he made a memorable appearance on the British television quiz show Have I Got News For You and starred in the documentary Get A Life, which explored Star Trek fandom. His eclectic career continued to evolve in 2014 with an autobiographical one-man show on Broadway, filmed for screening in theaters across multiple countries. Notably, a significant portion of the project's revenue went to charity. In 2015, Shatner showcased his versatility by portraying Mark Twain in an episode of Murdoch Mysteries and Croatoan in the final season of Haven. Trekkies rejoiced in the release of William Shatner Presents Chaos on the Bridge, a behind-the-scenes documentary about Star Trek The Next Generation. The year 2016 brought about the reality miniseries Better Late Than Never, where Shatner embarked on a grand tour of Asia alongside other aging celebrities. He also ventured into comic book publishing with Shatner Singularity, earning accolades with titles like Stan Lee's God Woke. In 2017, he continued his adventures with the second season of Better Late Than Never, which premiered on New Year's Day of 2018. His involvement in the animated series My Little Pony Friendship is Magic delighted fans as he voiced the character Grand Pair. I'm Grand Pair. Welcome to Ponyville. Additionally, he collaborated with Brian Evans on a music video cover of Dolly Parton's Here You Come Again. Shatner continued his acting career in 2021 with a role in the film Senior Moment, alongside Gene Smart and Christopher Lloyd. Interestingly, the movie premiered in March of the same year. Are you okay? Just getting a beer. Coinciding with Shatner's 90th birthday celebration. Moving into 2022, Shatner took on a new challenge by participating in season eight of The Masked Singer as Night depicted riding a golden goose. A recurring joke on the show involved the golden goose attempting to attack host Nick Cannon. Though Shatner's journey on the show was short-lived, he entertained audiences with his masked antics. On the television front, he hosted and served as an executive producer for The Unexplained on History from 2019 to 2023. Despite its run, the show received negative reviews from critics. Some critics, like Thomas Tunstall of Irish Film Critic, noted the show's scattered subject matter and lack of satisfactory answers to posed questions, suggesting it might cater to audiences with short attention spans. William Shatner's Life Outside Entertainment Beyond his professional accomplishments and personal challenges, health concerns also weighed heavily on Shatner. In the early 1990s, he faced the debilitating effects of tinnitus, a 
a condition he believes may have been caused by a pyrotechnical accident on the set of Star Trek. This health issue prompted concerns among audiences about Shatner's well-being. For years, the haunting sound of tinnitus plagued him, impacting his daily life and auditory senses. Seeking relief, he turned to habituation therapy, wearing an earpiece delivering low-level white noise to train his brain to relegate the intrusive tinnitus sounds to the background. Despite these challenges, Shatner displayed resilience and compassion, becoming a dedicated supporter of the American Tinnitus Association, raising awareness and supporting research for effective treatments. As if grappling with tinnitus wasn't enough, Shatner's health struggles extended into the realm of aging. In 2020, he disclosed his battles with swollen joints and age-related aches and pains. To manage his discomfort, Shatner turned to cannabidiol, CBD oil, known for its potential therapeutic properties. This revelation offers insight into the challenges faced by a legendary figure who, despite his larger-than-life persona on screen, is not immune to the physical toll of aging. At the remarkable age of 90, Shatner also embarked on a journey into space, a venture that did not unfold as expected. In a poignant article, he revealed that the experience did not evoke feelings of hope and boundless adventure, but rather overwhelming sadness and a profound sense of dread for the future. While the creator of Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry, envisioned a utopian and optimistic future for humanity, Shatner's personal odyssey left him confronting a disconcerting reality. Gazing upon Earth from space, Shatner felt a profound connection to the fragile sphere suspended in the cosmic vastness. Yet when he turned his gaze away, he confronted a chilling truth. Earth was but a tiny oasis of life surrounded by an unfathomable expanse of death. His cosmic perspective unfolded not as a journey into the boundless wonders of the universe, but as a confrontation with the profound insignificance of our existence. While contemplating the vastness of space and the potential existence of life beyond our understanding, Shatner's focus pivoted back to Earth. Born in 1931, he belongs to a generation that witnessed unprecedented technological advancements. Now, in the twilight of his years, he confronts the consequences of that progress. In a poignant lament, Shatner articulates the profound challenges faced by his generation, demanding bold leadership to navigate humanity into an uncertain future. Drawing attention to the looming COP15 UN Biodiversity Summit in his hometown of Montreal, Shatner implores global leaders to address pressing issues such as pollution, wasteful farming practices, and the preservation of the Earth's oceans. His journey into space has shifted his perspective dramatically. In a reflective editorial, he expresses regret for his role in inspiring humanity to look to the stars for its future. He solemnly declares, Earth is and will remain our only home, and that we have been ravaging it relentlessly, making it uninhabitable. Known for his on-screen charisma, Shatner has dedicated significant time to charity and philanthropy, particularly focusing on ecological issues. His commitment to environmental causes is evident in his actions as the honorary captain for Star Trek. The Cruise, where he played a pivotal role in persuading Norwegian cruise lines to cancel Swim with Dolphins experiences, rooted in the principles of Starfleet's prime directive, condemning the exploitation of species. William Shatner's philanthropic endeavors extend far and wide, supporting programs like the Central Kentucky Riding for Hope, Horses for Heroes, and the Hollywood Charity Horse Show, which raises funds for multiple children's charities. However, the tragedy deepens as Shatner, a longtime advocate for the well-being of Earth, now grapples with the harsh reality of environmental degradation. His somber realization about the state of our planet, coupled with a sense of responsibility, adds a layer of poignancy to his philanthropic efforts. The once celebrated explorer of fictional galaxies now turns his gaze inward, confronting the consequences of humanity's actions on the only home we know. Looking ahead, his release schedule for the coming year primarily features narrator roles, including his own documentary, William Shatner, War Chronicles, German. Additionally, he has released a new memoir, Boldly Go, Reflections on a Life of Awe and Wonder, offering insights into his extraordinary journey and perhaps a deeper exploration of the tragedies woven into the fabric of his personal and environmental narratives. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.